Hi, this is Ryan with uh, Blair Technology Group. Today we'll be looking at how to reload Windows using your Windows 7 Restore Disk. Uh, very first thing we'll want to do is go ahead and power down your machine completely. Uh, you can go ahead and hold down your power button on your actual machine for roughly about five seconds or so or until you see all the lights turn off. Uh, now once you are confident that the machine is completely off, we will want to go ahead and hit the power button to power the machine back on. Uh, when you do this, roughly a couple seconds after you hit that button, you will see come up to what they call the splash screen. Uh, it will be corresponding to the make of your computer, so Dell, HP, or Lenovo, one of those screens should pop up. When you do see that screen, you'll want to go ahead and hit the button uh, corresponding to get into the actual boot manager. Um, now Dell's and Lenovo's, you'll want to tap F12 roughly two or three times. Uh, on the HP, it'll be F9. It'll bring you to a boot menu similar to this, not exactly the same, but close. Uh, it's basically giving you a list of options you can boot the computer from. We want to select the one that'll say either CD-ROM, DVD-ROM, some of the HPs will say multi-bay. Uh, once you have this highlighted, you can use arrow keys to change selections. Once you have the selection that you want, you can just go ahead and hit enter. Uh, when you do hit enter, a message will come up across the screen that says press any key to boot from CD-ROM. So you will need to hit another key. Enter is fine. Just want to hit enter again. Uh, you only have a couple seconds to do this so you do have to be relatively quick. Uh, once you do hit enter again you'll come up to the screen that says Windows is loading files and there'll be a white bar going across uh, the bottom so that's how you'll know you're in the right spot. Now I have cut out uh, probably about a minute or two of that uh, white bar going across there just to save time on the video so it will take about a minute or two uh, before you get to this screen. Um, basically first thing you'll come up to is some language settings. Uh, they are all set to the proper uh, things by default English, uh, English United States, uh, keyboard settings or US. Uh, you don't want to fool with these. Basically you just want to go ahead and hit the next button. Now, once you click the next button you'll see this install now box in the middle. We'll want to just go ahead and, and left click on install now. It'll take about another 10 seconds or so uh, while setup is starting and it'll bring you to a license agreement. Uh, now, once you get to the license agreement, uh, you will have to check that box down there uh, to accept the terms uh, before that uh, next button will highlight and you can go ahead and click next. Once you do click next, it'll bring you to uh, this next screen here with two options. You have either upgrade or custom advanced. Uh, we will want to go ahead and click on custom advanced. Uh, now it'll show you a list of partitions of the hard drive uh, and basically what we want to do is we want to get rid of all these. So we want to go ahead and click that disk options advanced down there in the right hand corner and this will give us some more options here. Uh, we'll basically want to just delete everything. So you hit the delete button once you have the selected partition. It will bring up this uh, box here. You can just click OK. It's just a warning message. And then we'll go to the next one. Go ahead and delete this as well. We basically want to delete everything you see until you get to this disk zero unallocated space. Uh, this basically means all of the partitions are destroyed. Uh, once you get to this, you can just go ahead and click next. Uh, this will bring you to the uh, actual installation windows where windows will actually start loading off the disk at this point. Um, so you'll see we're at expanding windows here. It is at 0% and I have cut uh, a lot of this out here just for time saving. Uh, typically it does take about 15 minutes or so. It'll take about 3 minutes just to get to 1% uh, and this is typical. Uh, so don't be scared that it's locked up or anything. Uh, if it takes more than four or five minutes to get to 1%, then you might have an issue. But uh, like I said, it will take several minutes to get there. Uh, once it hits about 100%, you'll see it reboots uh, like my machine here is doing now. And uh, it'll bring you back into Windows here after a reboot.
now the machine will come back up here and it'll complete this last step, this uh, completing installation slash check mark here. Uh, we'll take about two minutes. I did cut a little bit of this out as well. Um, and once it's done, it's just going to go ahead and restart one more time. Once your computer reboots here, uh, it will bring you up to this window where it will ask you to basically put in a username to name your computer. You can put in whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. You can just put in random numbers, letters, or you can put in your name. It's completely up to you. Uh, once you do have something in there, you can just go ahead and click Next. Uh, and this will bring you to the password window. Uh, now, if you you can certainly set up a password if you like. You just want to basically type in a password, um, confirm the password, and a secret question in case you forget it. Now, if you don't have any security issues, no one's going to get on your computer that you don't want, uh, you can just leave all three of these boxes blank and just click Next. Uh, this will basically just assume that you do not want a password at all and uh, anytime that you boot up Windows you will not have to fool with uh, actually typing in a password uh, and if like I said if you have no security threat this is definitely the most convenient uh, now once you go ahead and click next it will bring you to the product key page uh, you will want to go ahead and type in your product key. Uh, your product key will be located on a Windows sticker. Uh, typically on the desktops, uh, they are stuck to the top of the desktops, assuming you have them standing upright. On the laptops, they're usually stuck to the actual bottom of the machine. Now here I just uh, put in a bunch of X's here to show you uh, what the format is. It will automatically capitalize all the letters uh, as well as it'll put the dashes in for you. So once you do have your product key entered. Uh, you can just go ahead and click next. Now once you go ahead and click next uh, it will bring you up to this uh, Windows setup window here. Uh, you, basically you want to either choose use recommended settings or install important updates only. Uh, now we typically recommend just use recommended settings. Uh, if you do click uh, install important updates only it will cut down on some of the, the actual amount of updates you have to do. Once you've made your selection here it will bring you to the time and date settings. I uh, we'll want to go ahead and use this drop down box uh, to choose our proper time zone. Uh, we are in Eastern Time here, so we're going to go ahead and uh, select um, Eastern Time. Just go ahead and left click it uh, to close this drop down menu. And then we'll also want to make sure that your uh, date and time are set properly. You can adjust this by clicking the left and right arrows. But once you do have the proper date in there, you can just go ahead and click Next and then this will actually bring us into Windows for the very first time here. Take just a second here to prepare the desktop. And as you get into Windows uh, 7 for the first time, uh, you see there's not really much going on here. Uh, they don't put much on the screen with a fresh install of Windows. All you see is a recycling bin there in the top left hand corner. Uh, there are a couple things pinned to the taskbar such as Internet Explorer, Windows Media Player, etc. Right next to the start menu which will be that blue ball in the left hand corner. Now what I'm moused over here is the internet connection. Uh, on the actual newer computers. A lot of the times Windows 7 is not going to have the Ethernet drivers right off the bat, so you're not just going to be able to hook it right up to the internet. Uh, you will need to go ahead and find the proper network drivers for the machine. Uh, I do have some on a USB drive ready to go. So you can see I plugged in the USB drive. It did pull up this menu. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and look in here and uh, find the proper drivers and there are some separate videos here we have linked on the site on how to find all the proper drivers for your machine so you might want to go ahead and check out one of those videos um, now I'm going to go ahead and run my uh, network driver here as soon as I find it
and now you can see I've established internet connection it's going to bring up this uh, set network location uh, I have a couple options here we'll probably suggest you use home network or public network home network if you have other computers you want to share files across or if you have a network printer or a wireless printer something like that you'll definitely want to use home network uh, if you do not probably public network it's certainly the most secure As you can see, we have made an internet connection. There's no longer a red X over there. Uh, now, what we we'll want to do is we we'll want to go ahead and go to Windows Update. Now, I did install a bunch of uh, drivers here, and I did cut that out for, for time purposes for sure. Uh, but what you want to do is go to the Start menu. Once in the Start menu, you we'll want to go ahead and click on All Programs. Uh, once you're in all programs, uh, we'll want to go ahead and find the one that says Windows Update. Uh, once you do locate Windows Update, we'll want to go ahead and left click on that. Uh, it'll bring up a menu and you'll want to basically check for updates. Um, you might install one update right off the bat to update the actual um, Windows Update mechanism. Uh, but after that, we'll want to go ahead and search again, and it will find a bunch of updates, roughly around 100 right off the bat, typically. Uh, it does take a minute or two. Uh, once it does locate these updates, you can just go ahead and uh, click uh, Start Updates or Install Updates. Um, it will take quite some time to do 100 updates. It could take up to two hours, depending on your internet speed. Uh, typically, there will be something you need to accept right off the bat. Uh, but after you have accept this, um, these terms here, uh, you can basically just let it sit there. You don't have to watch it. Uh, and like I said, it will take a couple hours. Uh, and you do not want to try to restart the machine or do anything else with the machine while it's loading updates. Um, more often you try to mess with things while it's doing updates there's very good possibility that it can um, cause the updates to become corrupt and basically making you have to start over from scratch uh, so you definitely want to just leave it alone here now I did skip some time here as you can see and we're right at the end of the updates um, this roughly took about an hour or so on my machine and uh, once we're done here it uh, will ask you to restart uh, so we'll just go ahead and restart the machine and once the machine restarts we'll basically just want to go ahead and repeat this process um, you have to do it roughly about five or six times before the machine completely gets up to date uh, we do recommend you do run all of the updates before you start uh, installing an antivirus or any other software or even get on the internet just because a lot of them are security patches so your computer is quite vulnerable until this um, you have completed all the updates um, now once the updates are complete you only really have to worry about Windows updates about once or twice a month as Microsoft releases new security patches uh, Windows will install these automatically in the background so you don't really have to go through this process again for sure uh, but uh, once that uh, is done, you should be free to use a computer as you see fit. Uh, if uh, you have any questions, certainly feel free to give us a call at uh, 855 Blair TG. Again, that's 855 Blair TG. We're available from uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I hope this video helped, and uh, have yourself a great day. Thank you.